Hi everyone, it is March 8, 2019. The Association of American Physicians and Surgeons posted a statement on federal vaccine mandates February 26, 2019 and I just came across it so I'm late in the game. I'm going to be reading their statement but first, I want to show you just within the last 24 hours, unvaccinated Oregon boy is diagnosed with tetanus, the state's first child case in 30 years. It is, look, I, I understand and I've read your comments and I know that this has periodically gone on uh, throughout the years. But they are really pushing it. I said, once the World Health Organization made public that anti-vaxxers, were included in the top 10 global health threats included with Ebola, I knew that they would be coming out strong and they would be coming out strong against all of us who post, post information revealing the dangers of these vaccines. Well, it's coming on strong, really strong. So within the last 24 hours, unvaccinated Oregon boy has tetanus uh, and this is a six-year-old who was playing on a farm in Oregon he fell down cut his forehead well he was fine for the first few days but then he began crying clenching his jaw and having muscle spasms his symptoms got worse he started having trouble breathing his parents called emergency services and he was airlifted to a hospital where was this farm that he had to be airlifted to a hospital? But he fell down and cut himself and got tetanus. You know, generally it's from stepping on a rusty nail. Well, I remember getting a tetanus shot and it was for tetanus. You can't get a tetanus vaccine with all, without also getting either a diphtheria vaccine or a pertussis and diphtheria vaccine there are no are there any monovalent vaccines maybe hepatitis B um, so when when if in fact this actually happened because well he fell down and cut himself how many people cut themselves and they don't get tetanus just from a cut well, this kid got tetanus. Okay, so very dramatic case of tetanus, but now those Americans who just can't think anymore, they may get, oh my God, panicked. If my child falls down and cuts themselves, they'll get tetanus. I better run out and get a tetanus vaccine, which will include diphtheria and or pertosis, which means it includes more poisons in the vaccine. Okay, I have never experienced a time when we have the most absurd going on. But it's absurd that is leading to children having their health destroyed or dying this is not just an absurdity, hey, let's just laugh at this. This is incredibly dangerous. And for those who leave the comments, this is a fake news story. Why are you posting it? It doesn't matter. The agenda is in full force. That's what I'm trying to get at. The agenda is in full force. The federal government is about to move to make vaccines mandatory not just for children but adults and whether they these uh, news stories are fake or not it well it matters if it's not fake because well somebody is you know suffering some disease or um, illness but even if it's fake what I'm trying to get you to see this is coming, and it's coming soon. Now, where is Trump on all of this? Where is Trump on all of this? He, candidate Trump, vaccines, I'm going to create a vaccine safety commission, and there's a link between the MMR and autism. Where is he? Has he said 
uttered a word while we're getting all of this propaganda. And they're setting up two camps, the pro-vaxxers, the anti-vaxxers. And you know what? Obama couldn't get those race riots. I could see, I could see violence erupting over this. Parents, the pro-vaxxers, how dare you live in my community and you have not vaccinated your child. They can't think anymore, get it. They are mentally ill. They cannot think. They're robots. And they're simply parroting back what they're hearing from government officials and mainstream media. So when you have people who don't know how to think, they are a danger to your community. The unvaccinated children, those who are their parents, you'll see pro-vaxxers coming after the anti-vaxxers. Um, you know, because it's not the anti-vaxxers who are mentally unstable. They are the people who, huh, well, there's information out there. Or I heard that these vaccines aren't safe. Let me check into it. That's what sane, responsible adults do. The pro-vaxxers are not sane. They're not responsible. And they are a danger to all of us. Um... Here, nearly 200 people in Texas immigration detention facilities have contracted mumps. You know, I bet a lot of pro-vaxxers are also open border advocates, which there lies a contradiction in those individuals. We've seen that those crossing the border are spreading disease. Oh, well, maybe we should enforce our immigration laws so we don't have people just crossing the border and spreading disease around the United States. Don't you think that's a good idea? Wow. Talk about, talk about a dumbed-down population. Well, it seems that it's just getting dumber and dumber on a daily basis now. Sixteen cases of mumps have been reported at Temple University. and Just two shots could have prevented that. Um, yeah. In Senate hearing on anti-vaccine crisis, all fingers point to social media. The sources that spread misinformation should be our primary cause of concern. You can't get a pro-vaxxer to look into that so-called misinformation because it's misinformation, right, to them. They've heard it. They've heard their children and mommy or daddy told them it's misinformation. That's enough for them. It's not misinformation. Not at all. Doctors, scientists, um, uh, uh, researchers, those who have done the studies, independent studies showing all of the dangers associated with these vaccines, that is not misinformation. But, yeah, Facebook vows to quash anti-vaccine misinformation. Okay, you pro-vaxxers, what are you going to do when suddenly you are only getting one side of the story. When they shut us all down, those of us who have done the research, those of us who have done the research and post the information regarding all of the kids who are having their health destroyed, coming down with neurological disorders, coming down with autism, coming down with immune autoimmune diseases, um, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go to get that information. If, if all of us get shut up, there's nowhere to go. And Congress, having passed legislation, letting those vaccine makers take a free ride, doesn't even matter if that vaccine um, inadvertently uh, gets contaminated and it's put on the market. The vaccine maker no longer has any liability. They don't care. And if you can even consider that there is a deliberate agenda to vaccinate everybody with dangerous vaccines, and they, Congress, you're, the people who represent you, 
have passed legislation removing any liability for any injury from a vaccine? Are you going to just trust your government to pull it off the market? Well, I'll get to some information that should really make you think if you can think. I I'm so, I don't understand this time we're living, but we are being shut down. Amazon takes the documentary Vaxxed off Amazon, can't see it. Um, Facebook, YouTube, they're all silencing not the misinformation, they're silencing the truth here and everybody should be really upset about it. States are failing on vaccinations. The federal government must lead. Washington Post, you got Forbes, the absurdity of, of avoiding vaccines. It's absurd. It's absurd to avoid vaccines. They're completely and utterly safe. That's why our Congress lifted liability from vaccine makers. If it was so safe, why did Congress, and why would Big Pharma or the vaccine makers even need that liability lifted off their shoulders? They wouldn't, right? If it's so safe. Why would we have created a vaccine court where they have oh, doled out four billion dollars to those who have been injured from vaccines? Why? Well, clearly, clearly vaccines are not safe. You know, and the New York Times opinion Finding compassion for vaccine-hesitant parents. They're infuriating and dangerous. I try to remember they're also the terrified victims of misinformation. Yes, you're, chill, you're, you're a child. You who actually are an adult and you are sane because you've done the research and you have learned, okay, these vaccines are not safe. So now... You're just a terrified victim of misinformation. This is reprehensible, what is going on. But they are pitting the two sides together, pro-vaxxers, anti-vaxxers. And those who will become violent are the pro-vaxxers because anti-vaxxers are sane, level-headed, rational, reasonable. And adults, they've done the right thing. They have done the research to find out what exactly is being injected into children because they love their child and they understand that as a parent, it is their job, it is their number one responsibility to keep that child safe. So they've done the research. These are sane parents. And this anti-vaxxer now, it's amazing. Mainstream media puts out a term, boom! It, it, well, it's like more contagious than measles. And everybody is using the term. Uh, and of course, yes. Here we have, oh, suddenly, at the exact same time, we've got all of this propaganda hitting. The largest study ever finds no link between measles, vaccine, and autism. Yes, of course. It's got to be published right now. Perfect timing, isn't it? Let me read the statement from the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. And please circulate this. The Association of American Physicians and Surgeons strongly opposes federal interference in medical decisions, including mandated vaccines. After being fully informed, of the risks and benefits of a medical procedure, patients have the right to reject or accept that procedure. The regulation of medical practice is a state function, not a federal one. Governmental preemption of patients or parents' decisions about accepting drugs or other medical interventions is a serious intrusion into individual liberty, autonomy, and parental decisions about child rearing. A public health threat is the rationale for the policy on mandated vaccines. But how much of a threat is required to justify forcing people to accept government-imposed risks? Regulators may intervene to protect the public against a one-in-one-million risk of a threat such as cancer, 
from an involuntary exposure to a toxin or one in 100,000 risk from a voluntary exposure. What is the risk of death, cancer, or crippling complication from a vaccine? There are no rigorous safety studies of sufficient power to rule out a much higher risk of complications, even one in 10,000 for vaccines. Such studies would require an adequate number of subjects, a long duration, years, not days, an unvaccinated control group, placebo, must be truly inactive, such as saline, not the adjuvant or everything but the intended antigen, and consideration of all adverse health effects, including neurodevelopment disorders. Those studies have not been done by our CDC. And I have posted several videos on what the CDC does. They don't conduct safety studies. They allow vaccines onto the market. You know, their partnership with the FDA, the vaccines, post-market safety data is collected. So, the CDC, the FDA feels absolutely fine with making Americans guinea pigs they put the vaccine on the market without any safety study. They collect the data afterwards. Those who have been vaccinated, they collect the data when you go to the doctor, when you're suffering any kind of adverse effect. They collect the data from hospitals, those showing up after they have been injected with a vaccine. They collect the data from VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Effects Reporting System. And you and, and we cannot get through to these pro-vaxxers that there aren't even any safety studies conducted by the CDC. What is happening here? This is a very unprecedented time, to say the least. Um, vaccines are necessarily risky, as recognized by the U.S. Supreme Court and by Congress. The Vaccine Injury Compensation Program has paid some $4 billion in damages and high hurdles must be surmounted to collect compensation. The damage may be so devastating that most people would prefer restored function to a multi-million dollar damage award. The smallpox vaccine is so dangerous that you can't get it now, despite the weaponization of smallpox. Rabies vaccine is given only after a suspected exposure or to a high-risk person such as veterinarians, the whole cell pertosis vaccine was withdrawn from the U.S. market a decade later than from the Japanese market. Our government knew how dangerous the whole cell pertosis vaccine was and they allowed it to stay on the market with children getting vaccinated with an incredibly dangerous vaccine for 10 years. And what was the adverse effect? Severe permanent brain damage. You cannot trust your US government. The acellular vaccine that replaced it is somewhat safer, evidently safer, though somewhat less effective. The risk benefit ratio varies with the frequency and severity of disease, vaccine safety, and individual patient factors. There that these risks or these factors must be evaluated by patient and physician, not imposed by a government agency. So measles is the much publicized threat used to push for mandates and is probably the worst threat among the vaccine preventable illnesses because it is so highly contagious, not because it's, it's so dangerous, but it's highly contagious. There are occasional outbreaks, generally starting with an infected individual coming from somewhere outside the U.S. Well, for years we've been hearing the outbreaks have been caused by unvaccinated children. Oops, wait a second, kind of like global warming. 
oh, well, it ceased, so we have to change global warming to climate change. Well, those outbreaks, uh, people are mm, catching on. The unvaccinated crowd, it's, it's not them. The outbreaks are caused by those who are getting vaccinated with live viruses. So can't tell them that it's the vaccinated crowd. We'll tell them that it's people traveling overseas and coming back to the United States. They're, they're traveling in countries that have outbreaks of measles. And when you look at the numbers, you want to scratch your head thinking, these are outbreaks? Are you kidding? Um, you know, well, the numbers are, what, 324 million in America, and the outbreak and the propaganda that came afterwards from that outbreak, Washington State, how many? Well, first it was 72, now I think it's 129. That's, that really, in a state with millions of people? And that's going to be used to mandate everybody get vaccinated from a disease that I have shown, yeah, not too long ago, it was, oh, I got the measles, Brady Bunch, Flintstones, uh, Donna Reed, everybody saying, oh, it's not a big deal. Okay, well, now, <gasps> oh, my God, a child that gets the measles, they're going to get brain damage, they're going to die. How did it go so quickly from... The Brady Bunch kids all having the measles at the same time. They're playing Monopoly. They're having a good time. Um, one of the Brady Bunch girls says, well, if we have to get sick, it's good that we got the measles. No big deal. Now it's completely turned on its head, and we have so many people believing this. It's scary what's happening here. Uh, the majority, but by no means all the people who catch the measles have not been vaccinated. Yes. Did you catch that? The majority, but by no means all the people who catch the measles have not been vaccinated. Those who have been vaccinated also can catch the measles. In fact, they're vaccinated and then they're carrying the live virus. Hence the reason why they cause the outbreaks. Okay, um, those who get the measles, those children, they make a full recovery and they have lifelong immunity. And that immunity then gets passed on via the, uh, into, you know, the fetus and the child, that lifelong immunity the mother passes it on to their child. These vaccines are disrupting all of that, making us, making the environment more dangerous. The last measles death in the U.S. occurred in 2015. Well, those two deaths were complicated because they had other conditions, so we don't know if they actually died of measles. Um, are potential measles complications including death in persons who cannot be vaccinated due to immune deficiency a justification for revoking the rights of all Americans and establishing a precedent for still greater restrictions on our right to give or withhold consent to medical interventions? Clearly not. Many serious complications have followed MMR vaccination and are listed in the manufacturer's package insert. Though a causal relationship may not have been proved, according to a 2012 report by the Cochrane, Cochrane Collaboration, the design and reporting of safety outcomes in MMR vaccine studies, both pre and post marketing, are largely inadequate. Inadequate. Mandate advocates often assert a need for 95% immunization rate to achieve herd immunity. However, Mary Holland and Chase Zachary of New York University School of Law argued in the Oregon Law Review that because complete herd immunity and measles eradication are unachievable, the best goal 
is for herd effect and disease control. The best outcome would result, they argue, from informed consent, more open communication, not shutting down the communication on social media, uh, and market-based approaches, even disregarding adverse vaccine effects. The results of near universal vaccination have not been completely positive. Measles, when it does occur, is four to five times worse than in pre-vaccination times, according to the Lancet, infectious diseases. So the measles have become worse, wow, since the era of get your child vaccinated um, because of the change age, age distribution, more adults whose vaccine-based immunity wane and more infants who no longer receive passive immunity from their naturally immune mother to protect them during their most vulnerable period. Yes, measles is a vexing problem, and more complete forced vaccination will likely not solve it. Better public health measures, early detection, contact tracing, and isolation, a more effective, safer vaccine, and effective treatment, that's what's needed. Meanwhile, those who choose not to vaccinate now might do so in the outbreak or they can be isolated. Immune suppressed patients might choose isolation in any event because vaccinated people can also possibly tr transmit measles even if not sick themselves. Issues that Congress must consider. Manufacturers are virtually immune from product liability, so the incentive to develop safer products is much diminished. Manufacturers may even refuse to make available a product believed to be safer, such as monovalent measles vaccine in preference to the MMR. Why bother? Because I'm not going to be hurt. I'm not going to have to dish out any money. I can put on the market whatever the hell I want. That's what your congressional representatives did to you. And you think your government's going to protect you. There are enormous conflicts of interest involving lucrative relationships with vaccine purveyors. Research into possible vaccine adverse effects is being quashed as it is dissent by professionals. Many vaccines contain live viruses intended to cause a mild infection. Children's brains are developing rapidly. Any interference with the complex developmental harmony could be ruinous. Vaccines are neither 100% safe nor 100% effective, nor are they the only means to control the spread of disease. Unvaccinated persons with no exposure to a disease and no evidence of a disease are not a clear or present danger. The, America, uh, the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons represents thousands of physicians in all specialties nationwide. It was founded in 1943 to protect private medicine and the patient-physician relationship. This association believes that liberty rights are unalienable. Patients and parents have the right to refuse vaccination. Although potentially contagious persons can be restricted in their movements as needed to protect others against a clear and present danger. But those who are vaccinated, you are free and clear, right? You're free and clear. You've been vaccinated. Therefore, you're not going to get the disease. So why are you the ones with the loudest voice sounding like immature children who are repeating what mommy and daddy told you to repeat mommy and daddy on mainstream media, your government officials? Why are you so afraid if your children are vaccinated? You're not making sense. You don't make sense because you've been whipped up into hysteria. Take a step back and do your own independent research and try to work on that confirmation bias that everybody has that leads us in the direction to get the information that confirms our beliefs. Beliefs are really dangerous when you haven't 
done any work to reevaluate those beliefs. I'll link below to everything.